KTRS in St. Louis, everybody. Hi, Kara. Hi, Sue. How you doing? I mean, this is like the perfect situation for me, having one of my great friends on the radio who actually knows everything about sports and football, but also has the same sardonic and sick sense of humor that I do. So it's like the perfect matchup. Absolutely, except you know that, and I also have that sense of humor that only Rich and I share that you roll your eyes at, yeah. which is, you know, singing Bertie Higgins classics in your kitchen after five bottles of wine. Let me explain to everybody the situation. So wow. Kara and Rich are, are best friends. Kara and I passed in the hallways in ESPN back in the day when we were both PAs. I think Rich may have asked her out before me, but that's a whole different ball of wax. So, Kara, um, do you care to chime in on that? Can you confirm or deny it? No, just you know don't, don't Rich answer. and I went to an event together, and, you know, classic Rich and myself, I think we were hanging out with the clown prince of baseball. Yeah. Remember him? Yes. So, you know... Rich and I were never, he's the, he's the brother I already have. That's yeah. the way I describe it. Wow. So. I'm sure that's, that's how every guy wants to be described, which <laughs> is fantastic, by the way. Uh, the good news also for me was when I was traveling so much, if, if Kara would go out with Rich, people would assume that it was me anyway, because we're both kind of five foot eight, nine ish, same color hair, same thing going on. So usually it made me look like a good wife because you were there. Also, when uh, Kara and Rich spend time together, they get drunk and I go to sleep because they think each other is the funniest person in the world. So <laughs> I find it convenient when you come in town and I appreciate that. But that's... Yeah, our, our rendition of Key Largo. <laughs> oh, you have it all, all right. <laughs> yeah. You ha so, Kara, I had, I had to have you on because pet peeves. I've got some issues. I was driving to work the other day and some guy on the radio is talking in, in his radio voice, because apparently when you're on the radio, you have to talk like this. And he's just bashing Kobe Bryant because of the whole field goal attempts. I guess he leagues the lead in, uh, in, in field goal attempts. He guys played for 20 years, first of all. But my pet peeve is this. Radio guys who are probably five foot four wearing a hoodie, calling out guys they're never going to meet. Um, that's a pet peeve of mine. He also went after Anthony Davis and called him a unibrow. My thought is, wow, would you call him a unibrow to his face? Number one. Number two, Anthony Davis of the Pelicans. This is the day after the, their win over the Lakers. He's a master blocker. Um, he can wax his eyebrow if he chooses to. I'd still rather be Anthony Davis. What's your pet peeve? Give me a couple. Oh, well, you, you've hit one of mine, and, and it's, I'll, I'll take it. It's a, it's a little bit off of it, but it's the same thing. I think that Reporters who are snarky on Twitter to athletes and coaches drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's similar to what you say. It's, hey, if you're not going to say something, if you wouldn't have the guts to say what you're tweeting to somebody's face, exactly. don't tweet it. You know, we follow you because you're a professional and you're going to report on, you know, whatever game you're at, not for your sense of humor. You know, save it for your buddy in the press box who's sitting next to you. And, and people used to do that all the time. Now they go to Twitter and, and do that instead. And that, that, that drives me crazy. And then my other, not to be, you know, but we are talking pet peeves, but not to be overly negative. We went to a game. Obviously, we played in Arizona last week. And I brought my 10-year-old um, son. We were sitting up in the stands. You know you're going into hostile territory. You know what you sign up for. But when you have a fan who is so drunk and vulgar that a 10-year-old feels scared to sit yeah. in the stands, that's, I mean, come on. I mean, it's one thing if you just want to yell and heckle. That's part of what you sign up for. But when it gets to the point where somebody behind you is yelling, screw the Rams, but they're not saying screw, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous that, that there's this loss of civility, yeah. I think, now that you can't even sit with your family at a football game. We, she's referring to, of course, the St. Louis Rams. She is Kara Henderson Sneed, and uh, we have 90 seconds to a hard out, Kara. I'd like to give you the radio terminology because it makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, grown men wearing jerseys, not a fan. I also don't believe, and if you are a man over the age of 14 or 16, when you see these guys pushing kids out of the way to get into an autograph, that really bugs me. Or just using the kid to go get the autograph. Worse. Worse. That's that's always a classic, but you always see them in the lobbies whenever you go to a, whenever you go to a team hotel. Kara, we at the combine every year, just coming out of the combine with like prospect maybe number three hundred that may never yeah. make an NFL team. There's people out there lining up with their photos for pictures. Isn't isn't that just bizarre? It is, but they want to be the person that got them before they were who they were. I guess. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I guess it's a big business. 
Mm. I'm not a big fan of the pink hat. How about that? I think if you're a woman and you, and you want to support your team, you wear a regular hat. Are you calling out Red Sox Nation? Red Sox Nation. You know, here's, listen, I, I, have, I have lost friends to breast cancer. I have, uh, and I support the Breast Cancer Foundation in every way and shape and form. And that's what they were for, I think, originally in right. some way. And so that I want to separate from, like, the girly pink hat. 35 seconds to a hard out, Kara. I mean, again, the terminology is fantastic. Uh, one last pet peeve. One last pet peeve. You know, this is kind of a general one, but it would be take much more thought. But I think we should be able to use all the technology, all the technology we have to bear now to get calls right at NFL games. It's too hard. It's too fast for for refs to be able to, to make these calls uh, by themselves on the fly. I hear it, Kara. Thanks for joining us. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience. <laughs> 